What's up, Spare Parts Army? Welcome back to Task and Purpose. Russia claims their most advanced anti-tank missile system, the 9M133 Cornet, is capable of taking out any main battle tank with a single shot. It's a man-portable anti-tank guided missile, which was designed specifically to take out NATO's main battle tanks. And for a period of time, it made Russia the most technologically advanced anti-tank force in the entire world. They say it outmatches both the US Javelin and the British Enlaw missiles. In this video, we're gonna examine whether or not that's really true, or if maybe, just maybe, the Russians are lying to us. Anything that you use every single day is worth investing in. That's why this year I upgraded to this video sponsor, the Ridge Wallet. It's light, sleek, and industrial. It doesn't fold or awkwardly budge in your back pocket. It seriously changed my whole pocket situation. It's designed to fit easily into your front pocket. Most people are using old wallets designed in the 1990s, carrying around old receipts, pictures of their ex, and gift cards in an unorganized mess. Why have we moved from large flip phones to smartphones, but still carry around the old same wallet. The Ridge Wallet holds up to 12 cards, plus room for cash. There's over 30 colors and styles, including carbon fiber and burnt titanium. If that wasn't enough to win you over yet, check out their 40,000 five-star reviews. The durable material means each wallet comes with a lifetime warranty. You can buy this one wallet and carry it for life instead of replacing it every few years. The Ridge team is so confident that you'll like it, they'll let you test drive it for 45 days. You can send it back for a full refund if you don't love it. It's the perfect gift for Father's Day. Click the link in the description and use code TASK to get 10% off your order today. In the 2014 invasion of Crimea, the Russians' cornets destroyed hundreds of Ukrainian tanks, and that was its first widespread use against armored targets. In fact, it played a big role in providing proof that it was actually Russia who invaded Crimea because people were digging these cornet missiles off the ground and seeing that it had Russian writing on it. So you can understand why Russia thought they were headed in the right direction with this weapon. On paper, the cornets looks like the weapon you would want to take into combat. But as we'll see, those numbers don't always match up with the practicalities of the realities of using it in the heat of combat. Some sources call it a second generation, while others will say that the Cornets is a third generation anti-tank system. I like to think of it more as a, I call it a 2.5 generation, honestly. I think the reason for this discrepancy, it's kind of like a halfway between the two because it's not wire guided. It has a newer laser guided ability, but it still lacks an automatic lock on homing feature. The Cornets is also known as the AT-14 Springar, according to its NATO designation. Springar is of course, as we all know, a reference to the legendary creature from Cornish fairy lore. I assume the NATO officer who came up with that nickname wanted to show off their obscure, pretentious European fairy knowledge. Someone promote that guy. Where did the missile originally come from. Development began in 1988, where they set to work on creating a modular laser-guided missile that could be mounted on a tripod or attached to the turret of the armored vehicles like the BMP. The laser-guided ability was a unique aspect of the Cornet, as the earlier generations of the Soviet ATGMs like the AT-4 and AT-5 were wire guided. The use of the laser guidance meant the rounds were more accurate and less likely to malfunction after being launched. It does, however, have the downside of being vulnerable to the tank's smoke countermeasures. Every tank has a smoke canisters that can be instantly deployed, which can throw off any laser guided munition. The Cornet, however, was not designed to fully replace these older Soviet launchers because Russia simply could not afford to fully equip their entire force with them. The AT-14 system is comprised of the 9M113 three missile, a tripod launcher unit, and a long range thermal sight. The original Cornet launcher could range out to 5,500 meters, with more modern warheads like the Cornet EM capable of launching out to 10,000 meters. But this is where the on paper specifications versus the practical combat use starts to kind of butt heads. One of the key distinguishing features is its insanely far max range, right? The Javelin max range, for instance, is only 2,000 meters. But there's a catch. The effective ranges on the Cornets are are largely limited by the operator's ability to visually acquire and identify the enemy at long ranges using the thermal sights. Russian thermal optics have never been known for being outstanding resolution. Basically, your human beings have a limit to their ability to visually see the enemy. So even if your missile can fly farther, it won't do you any good 
if you can't track the target. This is a huge problem, particularly in the current Ukrainian conflict, because both sides are using the same or very similar looking equipment. It's the reason why we see both sides placing brightly colored tape all over themselves to clearly mark which side they're fighting on. Using the same vehicle and equipment can potentially make it difficult to confirm your target is actually an enemy at the extreme distance of 10 kilometers. How often do you even have a distance of 10 kilometers unobstructed? There are some other pros and cons that need to be weighed with this weapon. Though the Cornet missile system was designed to be able to be carried by two soldiers due to weight and size, the system can only be carried short distances. This is a potential downside of the Cornets when compared to the NATO anti-tank systems, which are much more portable. For this reason, the Cornet usually has to be transported in support vehicles close to where they're going to be in place. Once in place, however, it takes the operator less than a minute to set up the launcher and fire a round. Or five minutes if you're like me and you need to take a second to catch your breath after running with a 120 pound missile launcher. The whole weapon was designed to conceal the soldier while they aim. This is the reason for the two being mounted above the fire control system. Part of the reason that it's so heavy is because the missile needs to be huge in order to defeat the heavily armored NATO tanks. Now, according to multiple open source military intelligence resources, they placed the AT-4 Cornet's maximum penetration at between 1,000 and 1,300 millimeters of rolled homogenous steel. This means the only place it wouldn't be able to defeat the Abrams main battle tank is in the frontal armor, where it has a protection rating of approximately 1,600 millimeters. Like with most things in Armored World though, there are exceptions to the rule, and we'll see in just a minute how some of the tactics that are used with the Cornets are used to increase how destructive it is. The system is more commonly seen attached to vehicles to take on armored threats such as the BMP-3, Tiger 4x4, and Russia's newest line of armored cars and IFEs. These vehicles-based systems are more for defense against tanks rather than trying to take them head on. Because if you don't succeed with your first shot, there's a good chance you're gonna have a very angry tank pointed right at you. AT-14s mounted on BMPs are mounted similar to the way that American toes are on Bradley's with two launchers on each side of the turret. In this configuration, however, reloading is extremely difficult and typically involves taking the whole vehicle out of the fight for an extended period while the crew reloads. This differs from American systems that can be manually reloaded by the crew without leaving the vehicle in just a couple of minutes. Auto-loading versions of the launcher are in the prototype stages, but don't expect to see any of them on the battlefield anytime soon. If the missile doesn't automatically lock onto the target, how does its tracking system work then? The Cornet uses lasers to guide itself onto the target. The operator has to constantly aim the laser and make sure that they're keeping the missile on target, painting the target. If they're able to do that, then they will hit within five feet of where they're aiming. While five feet might sound like a large margin of error, when your target is literally bigger than a barn door, it makes a little more sense. The back of the Cornet missile flashes incredibly bright, which makes it easier to see at longer ranges. It might sound impossible to keep a laser dot on the target five kilometers away, but it's easy to see the laser dot on your thermal imaging device. The computer inside the missile locks onto that laser and flies in a conical pattern, gradually in a tighter and tighter rotation until the round hits the target. Now you might wonder why they spin around the laser and it doesn't just go in a straight line. But this is to ensure that the round does not block the physical laser guiding it or the operator doesn't lose sight of whatever vehicle they're trying to destroy. Trust me, you don't wanna be the guy who misses with a weapon system that costs more to fire than your commander makes in an entire year. These go for about $26,000. This laser guided munition is better than wire guided systems because they greatly extend the range and don't run into any of the issues that come with having a giant wire attached to you, like trees or other debris get snagged on wire-guided systems. But more specifically, any body of water, even a small pond or a big puddle, could be enough to short out any wire that it touches. This is why modern American tow systems have been moving away from wire-guided to laser-guided. In this regard, the Cornets is more advanced than most common American ATGMs. The missile itself is a tandem explosive that's designed to destroy any reactive armor seen on most modern main battle tanks and APCs in service today, which is those brick looking things that you see sprinkled on top of vehicles. The Cornet's dual warhead 152 millimeter explosive detonates the ERA with a small initial charge, then with a second charge defeats the now exposed armor by focusing all of the explosive power of the round directly into the vehicle. 
It's also capable of mounting explosive thermal barrack rounds designed to take out bunkers or harder stationary targets other than vehicles. Because the explosion they cause uses so much oxygen, it sucks the air out of whatever building or structure that gets hit. The real question is how have the Cornet missile systems been used in combat. The Cornet was introduced in the late 90s for Russian forces and for export to different countries. It saw its first combat use in 2003 against us Americans of all people. Not cool, man. In the first week of Iraq war, Iraqi special forces used the Cornet against Americans advancing in the country, although they were only able to disable two Abrams and one Bradley. US forces were actually ordered to seize any samples of the Cornets at that time to be able to be analyzed by military intelligence. This brings us to another important aspect, which I never hear talked about with anti-tank missiles. The Cornet has a max velocity of between 250 and 300 meters per second. That is slow enough for active protection systems to shoot down with ease. The Javelin missile, on the other hand, reaches speeds of up to 2,000 meters per second, which makes it near impossible to intercept by a tank's countermeasures. To add to this, Cornet tripod launchers don't necessarily work as well in an offensive setting as they would in a defensive setting, which Russia was planning for because due to the size and weight, they're slow to reach the battlefield. So by the time they're in place by dismounted soldiers, the opportunity to use them is already lost. This is where Ukraine has had more success with its own launchers, which can hide out in strategic locations locations until a target comes into view. This isn't to say the Cornet isn't a dangerous weapon system, but it's not seeing the defensive tank-on-tank -tank battle that it was originally designed for. Now compared to the Javelins being fielded by the Ukrainians, the Cornet has one major significant drawback, being that it only fires in a direct fire mode. Unlike the Javelin, which utilizes a top attack mode, striking the most vulnerable parts of the tanks, the Cornet, in 99% of cases, is firing directly at the most well-protected portion of the vehicle you might manage to penetrate the armor in certain areas, but not in critical sections of the vehicle that would fully take it out of the fight. This means that if target is moving or if it shifts positions even a little bit, there's a good chance that the guy who fired the round will not be able to adjust in time. To counter this, vehicles like the BMP-3 incorporate systems that rapidly fire two Cornet missiles in quick succession, with the hopes that the first round will create a weakness in the armor that the second missile can exploit. Due to the relatively high cost of the Cornet in Russia's military budget, these systems are few and far between, not being able to be deployed in large, significant numbers to make any real tactical impact. Russia has recently resorted to creating technicals with Cornet systems strapped to the bed of the truck. But these technicals are completely vulnerable to any small arms fire and only capable of hit and run attacks. Russian technicals will never compare to Toyota pickup trucks with entire AA cannons in my book though. Now Russia has continued to modernize the Cornet launcher creating remote firing variants and upgraded loading and targeting systems. But with the current military and economic situation, it's questionable if these upgrades will see the light of day. What do you guys think of the Cornets after seeing its performance in Ukraine? Does it live up to the hype? I'm Chris Cappy, your average infantryman, and this is Task and Purpose, signing out.